just awkwardly, awkwardly waiting. I'm just gonna watch the stream and see when it, when it, when it swaps over. <laughs> oh. All right, week eight. eight. It's week eight. Yeah, we're on week eight now. Two we're on week months. eight. Wow. This is uh, this is gonna be more of a community focused podcast. A lot more about the game, the community experiences, quality of life changes, etc. Um, you know, we don't we've done a lot of siege RTA kind of things. So I thought maybe this would be a good group to get together to talk about all the other things in the game, right? A lot of us here are streamers, more community focused than we are like competitive PvP focused. So it'll be great to hear from you guys. Um, first of all, welcome, Kid Ocean. It's great to have you. Appreciate having you on the podcast first time. If you want to go ahead and introduce yourself so everyone knows who you are. Some of us know you, not everyone does, but it's great <laughs> to see you nonetheless. Oh, thank you. I'm I'm happy to be a part of it. Um I'm Hero Shin. I'm a Twitch streamer. Um as once in love said earlier, um very community driven. I do like RTA. It's probably probably the main thing I, I would stream. Um, but I do small help, um, help desk type things, help rerune. Um I've been playing the game for seven years, so I'm pretty well veteran in it. Really trying to push that G one this season, but we'll see how well it goes. It's been it's been it's been a good last season, but before that, it was real rocky sailing. <laughs> All right. Well, it's great to have you either way. I appreciate it. Good luck on your G1. Um, as well, we have Surin. Lots of you guys know Surin. Surin's been around for quite a while, um, streaming for quite a while, partnered as well, and has been on the uh, the Summer's War official stream many times. So if you want to introduce yourself and let everyone know who you are, what you do, it'd be great. Awesome. So, yep, yeah, I'm Saren. I've been streaming for over two years now. Um, I've been playing the game for six years. Um, and I mostly do, I guess, entertainment, summoning, that kind of vibe. I want to get more into PvP content, but it's really intimidating. I get tilted really easily and uh, that whole vibe. But I am trying to improve. Um, my best finish is I think I've finished C3 the last four seasons i was one win away uh two seasons ago and then this last season season i just got wrecked uh g1 was a totally different animal last season and i'm just like i don't know how what it's going to take to catch up but i'm going to keep trying to hit g1 so that's where i'm at with that nice well <laughs> i wish you the best of luck with that i'm sure if you want to reach out to any of us we'd be happy to kind of chat about it and go through it you're right, though. There is that kind of like wall and difference. And I think a lot of it comes down to the way people draft and it, the changes with that. But like I said, this is not necessarily an RTA focused podcast. So uh, let's get into it. The first thing we, I kind of want to bring up um, is basically the latest patch. We have the anniversary, a lot of new stuff, a lot of new events, etc. Uh, I want to hear you guys' opinions. Out of what's been announced so far, what's your favorite? Um, and I want to start with Elsie. I want to hear what you have to say about this. Out of what's been announced so far, um, I would say my favorite's probably the rune event because it it just allows you to get so excited about rolling a specific rune that you might really, really need. Um, and I know everyone gets excited about summons and all that, and that is exciting, but for me personally, I like the rune event. Uh, it's it kind of gives you something to look forward to for this month and a half long event that you can you know you farm all day you do a couple rerolls and then maybe you maybe you just hit the jackpot so I think that could be really cool to look forward to for the next couple months. So what are you crafting then? I still haven't thought about it. I got my scrolls immediately, <laughs> <laughs> and then I I was just like, I'll, I'll get, get it later. later. That rune event, but I haven't <laughs> done the rune event. Yet. Yes, <laughs> I'm excited about it, but I haven't done it. Um, probably some combination of via will slot four six, uh, crit damage, and then HP or attack. Um, Sounds good. Sounds pretty standard. What about you guys? What are you guys yeah. thinking about rune wise? Hmm. Honestly, I'm always lacking speed. I have a, I have a huge speed deficit, so I'm probably just going to speed chase. Uh, I haven't targeted what my 246 is going to be, but it's going to be a speed chase no matter what I do. So so are you thinking about a swift rune then, or are you thinking about just final will? Well, I just rolled two tw over 20 speed runes last week. I reapped them. They took three reaps. It was amazing. I was beyond lucky but um yeah they're already the fastest two swift runes i have which is like a 20 it was a 21 and a 23 um uh, but the 23 was a slot six uh, attack percent so i was okay with that um but yeah honestly i'm, I'm, I'm like in the 18s to 21 with a grind so i need to seriously jack that up so mm -hmm. that's what so, i'm gonna uh, do. for myself um 
I'm really torn right now. I finally hit my my new speed peak threshold, and I think it was like last week. I rolled a slot six swift HP percentage rune, and it quadded twenty eight speed. Wow! So That's I am nice. I That's am nice. finally plus two ten. Bastet, like I'm two eleven, so I'm like I have a whole new profound speed. So I'm like, <sighs> I don't know if I should like kind of stack up with the second fastest set, um, because I think the next closest thing is like two o five. So I'm torn if I should go with another swift rune or just you know violent is so hard to pass up especially one that you can target craft um because you could just be like oh man i need an hp percentage yada yada and i really needed to have x amount of speed or this stat and it's really hard to pass a rune that's just so versatile across the board mm -hmm. yeah especially if you don't take if you take like a like a violent or will crit damage or or speed slot too like you can reap those without the innates so like it's do I want the pity chance? And there's a gazillion stats. monsters that need that rune. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really torn on if I want to take a swift rune or if I want to take a violent rune. I've taken a will slot six attack percent because I'm looking for a triple speed. Anything 22 plus is a, a big upgrade. But I'm just I'm really torn on if I want a swift rune or if I want a, a violent rune. It'll How probably be a crit damage rune slot four. I got 20. I got 22 and 21s on okay. violent will and swift for slot four but i really want like a 22 crit damage for swift because i can push barb over 315 320 range if i do that what's your fastest swift slot four crit damage crit damage like a double Ooh, uh, i think it's a die i think it's 18 with 16 crit oh okay I mean, so it's, it's like a legend rune but it's a double speed yeah i need the triple speed i need the triple speed more than i need the double speed with the crit understandable yeah i yeah I get it. Yeah. That bar boost is so important. Yeah, it's I don't know, it's there. I'll figure, <laughs> I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. You know, eventually. It, it just it's just I don't know. It really it really comes down to like what I feel in that exact moment. I'm like, do I want to gamble the swift rune? In one that, in that's eight. that's where it's at. I mean, it's I've gotten to the point game. where you got a pretty I'm good really chance. One in four. You just have to hit it. Like I don't care if it rolls four speed, I just have to hit the the speed, right? Mm -hmm. Once. I wish I would Pardon. just tell us what the what the rate is for speed power ups. I just want that number. So want... okay, so people talk about this all the time. <laughs> people ask if certain stats are rigged to be higher or lower than other ones. I want to say that it's very unlikely that they are different, and the reason I say that is because in Korea and Japan, it is illegal not to share those rates unless they're exactly the same what it's illegal okay the way i understand the law is it's illegal if you're spending money on something to not know the rates but since we're technically paying money for the base stats we're not paying money for the rolls they may have a legal le loophole in that could argue it with reaps though right that's fair you could that argue fair. it with reaps and it's, and because and and the reason i bring that up is because korea just had that issue with nexon with like maple story and their flame rates and their their cubes like they didn't tell players that they couldn't get triple boss or triple drop so people were spending the hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to get these lines that just didn't exist yeah but it's still the just not telling us whatsoever is also kind of like you know it, they should at least write it somewhere if it is true that it's all even nobody believes it's even though from like uh -huh. experience but i mean I, it firmly, would... I honestly firmly believe it's even because statistically the chance to get triple speed is like to get triple of any stat is really low right mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then unless it's resistance. quad on any stats like hitting the lottery i mean I, I sometimes I don't understand how I've done it. I'm like, at this point, I guess I should have just bought a gazillion lotto tickets because that's probably about how many runes I've gotten, right? I got to win the lotto eventually. I would argue they're all even because I've had maybe a dozen quad rolls over all stats and I've had four quad speed rolls. To be honest, not very many of us roll most stats to quad. So it's not like we would really know what percentage. Like if it's a quad, if it rolled two or three accuracy, you're probably going to, you know, stop powering up that rune anyways, right? Fair. So, fair, fair, yeah. Fair. Took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say a lot of us don't see the entire like roll pool because mm -hmm. we stop and then we quit, right? Yeah. Sell the rune, move on, et cetera. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, like, we're talking about the rune events. We've gotten that far into accuracy. Yeah. I don't know. I if I triple roll something, I always roll it. Like mana's whatever. I just roll it for fun. Like <laughs> I don't have that I quad luxury. Rolled crit on a like an energy rune slot one. And I was like, all right, twenty four hey. crit quad roll. Like all right, whatever. I'm, I'm never using this, but it's there. I don't have the mana for that. <laughs> I 
I never have mon. I'm always just summoning, Armor. refreshing the shop. I I have issues. Uh, refreshing shop is brutal here. If you're really going through it, it's it, it starts to get pricey. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we talked about the rune event. What's your guys' favorite events? Harrison. Ah man, I, I was kind of in the same boat, but more on the community side i'm actually gonna have to go with the summoning i've noticed like people are really really hyped about it and they've actually kind of gotten me hyped about it and i'm like i get to i get to wait i get to kind of pick what i want and you know i always say it's going to the casino because you could be hitting all three stars or you could have that lucky batch of 100 that got two nat fives and you're like hey wait a minute this is the business so i'm gonna have to go with summons right now because I feel like everybody's just really excited about it, and they kind of got me to bandwagon. <laughs> nice, that's exciting. That's exciting. Mm. Um, I think for the summon thing, it's it's really cool. A lot of people are kind of like fifty fifty on it. Um, from what I've like seen and heard in the community, some people are like love it, some people really hate it. I think a lot of people have responded more according to how they've summoned with it. Definitely, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, that, that's about on rate with that five right half the people get it half the people don't the, the yeah. reddit response right <laughs> i got fucked so i'm angry i did really really well so i'm really happy it's like, you know, it's one of those one of those awkward kind of 50 50s i as someone who hasn't done the summons and i probably won't be for a while i'll probably hold on to them just to have fun with it but i i think it's a really good idea it's like a premium summoning stone rotation and i mean it's really premium because on top of being able to like choose your five stars you choose your three stars as well so like for me i just picked a, i just pick it's all it's all rakuni skill ups and it's all <laughs> gildong skill ups like why not right because like you got real good just, and real clever with that because i'll just now keep that working I'm on my world boss it. i'll just keep working like, on my siege offenses why not right i still have a gazillion tricaru <laughs> skill ups that i need so i'm like wait i should just start doing inagamis right now i'm in the, the same question- i'm doing spectras the question is, if you have Trakaru running and you don't need the skill ups to run it, does it just get faster? Is that the only thing having the skill ups will do? It'll just get faster. Yeah, I think what he meant was he needs the. Wait, do you mean you need the skill ups so you can await you can second awaken them? Yeah, I only have oh, I, okay. I have actually gone through all of them. I second awoken and fed every, and I only have like two more skill ups left. But that that's a lot of Inugamis if it you is. do it yeah. the hard way. <laughs> it's a lot. It's, it's taken like it's taken a good longer. minute. And it's gotten to the point where I started needing like grinds and gems for my ancient runes because they've been giving us these predator runes. And I'm like, mm-hmm. uh, I've been like weighing my options. I'm like, well, wow, Tricaro is working. So I'm just I've kind of put it on the back burner because I, I pulled a couple nice runes and I'm like, I really need these gems and grinds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that when it came down to giving us a new scroll or giving us some kind of something different, the only thing you can really give the community that's going to make them even moderately happy is to reduce the chances of dupes in any form that you can. And so since they weren't apparently going to give us another ancient transcendence um, for this event, the best thing you can do is then do something like this where you can control the pool of monsters that you're going to be summoning from, which I'm okay with. The problem is, is like if you're in a weird situation where like, you have all the nat fours. You're good on your skill ups. I'm kind of just stockpiling like leftover stuff, or like I haven't gone after like I haven't done my cocky because the whole drama. I was like, I'll deal with him later and see where I want to use him. So like that's the only thing I have to really worry about skilling up. So for me, it's turned into like worry about nat fives, and you're like you have a fifty percent chance of getting them. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> either I get my Leo or I don't, and I pout and I become the Reddit problem. <laughs> No, I won't. I won't go Reddit rage, but I need a Leo, man. I need a Leo. I need Leo so bad. So that's my hope. I had three of them. Oh. <laughs> I got three of them too. I, got, uh, I used to keep them for lab stages, and then they changed lab stages so you could use the same monster. So I was like, I don't need yeah. any of these Leos anymore. So I got rid of all of them. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yep. I still have a dream <laughs> of having a Nagong someday because you guys all know clearly I'm light heavy. So I'm like, I'm destined to summon a gong, and I will summon a gong and three Leos at, for all my arena battles for the rest of my life. <laughs> and I would just click and walk away, click and walk away, <laughs> click and walk away. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Mm-hmm. I think um, it, it's nice because 
so from a marketing perspective, I see the reason that they don't do another Ancient Transcendence, right? There are those few players who have everything, right? If you have everything, you just buy the Ancient Trans, you hold on to it. Next time units come out, you would summon one less of them, right? So like from a marketing perspective, it makes sense that they wouldn't, they would want people to be spending more. Um, so what they do is they create this pool that still benefits the majority, like a huge majority of players and mm -hmm. still gives them options. And then, you know, for anyone who already has everything, like you just summon them because you want ancient crystals or maybe you want dupes for siege or something or like the rare dupes you use for RTA and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But overall, I think, I think the event is, is designed very well. And it's also fair. It's also f I I th at least I think it's fair. I think what it's a very fair, fair way like, to approach the event. What's an unfair event? I think <laughs> unfair events are ones where it's like it's impossible to come close to finishing it unless you're like constantly grinding the whole time, right? Okay. So this kind of leads into mm -hmm. my next portion because I already asked you guys what you thought about the events and stuff. So, well, I guess we need to jump into what Saren's favorite one is as well. I'm just going to say really team. quick. I'm just going to say really quick. Uh, my towers aren't done, so the change for glory points is significant <laughs> for me. Uh, but I've just been really lazy, so I'm I'm all about this. Yeah, I think a lot of I, the towers are fifty fifty. Some people are really upset, and some people are really happy, and it's just like I don't understand why you'd be upset. It's like you finished yeah, your tower. What is there yeah. to be you had upset three about. years of advantages over people who didn't finish their towers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're going to be upset like about upset. the game being easier now, there's like seven hundred other things to be upset about too. Like. Yeah, just pick your battles. I think people just want to be mad about everything these days. For sometimes sure. it's like, okay, no, this is nice. This, the whole thing is about improving the game for early, for more players to come in, be able to catch up. And the longer, the more the new players get to catch up to us, then the longer the game lives. So we want this long term. Well, so and the more active they will be, hence exactly. why our RTA has grown so much. They're making it to where players have access to the things that are needed to actually be competitive in you know, put up a fight in the battle against the people that have been playing for seven years. Exactly. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of that. So that improvement for me, obviously I like to summon, but, you know, aside from that, glory towers and uh, all those points being changed, I think that's a really, really good improvement and it needed to happen. So I think that's great. Yeah, yeah plus we get one more glory per win in Arena too, which is nice. So 15% yeah. overall reduction um, plus that is really, really quite a change. I think it's good. It's yep. really good for the game. Been asking for it for years on Island Grounds podcast, so mm -hmm. we finally got it. It took us forever, but they finally gave it to us. They're doing really um, good. They're doing it's good. Easier this year. to farm my Devilmon every week, uh, so I'm happy. But yeah, the thing I did want to talk about was the um the currency, the event mm -hmm. currency. So some people are really fifty fifty on it. Some people are really happy with the way it turned out. Some people are really upset with it. Um, for the fact that both the events use the same currency. Um, I see both sides. Uh, let me just kind of just framework this and then get your guys' opinions on it. Um, on one side, you don't like it because it's like, do I want the shop or do I want the runes? On the other side, it's nice because everything's just all together and you just have to do what you're normally doing, right? You do whatever you do in the game normally. You get currency. You spend it on whatever event you want. Some people prefer having both and maybe get a little bit less of each overall, but you can kind of separate them and you don't have to choose. Um, what do you guys think about it? Personally, I think that it's fine because there's 40, there was like 50 days. Yeah, if this was an event, yeah. if this was an event that was like a one month event, I would say, yeah, that's really annoying because you do have to use a lot of resources to, to get it completed. But you have two months. I, I really don't see an argument for that because the there are so many challenges to do, which you're naturally going to do anyways. There's so many, they drop somewhat infrequently, but you're still going to be farming normally anyways. If, if you if you don't hit your goals, it's kind of maybe because you're a more casual player, but I don't see you not finishing either event. You just won't have an obscene amount of extra pieces or seals left to refresh your rune. And that's really the only thing I could see you not being able to do to like the level you'd want to see it. Um, also, I'd like to note two things. One, there's no daily limit to the event, mm -hmm. which means you can farm it indefinitely. And two, the... Um... The Super Angel Mon, the Summoning Stones, and the other thing in the shop are not infinite buys. You buy them once. It just doesn't say one of one. I just want you to know that now because people have been asking me this. He's so like, I bought I it to show them that it was a one. Oh, that picked um, Because that would be but nuts. on the back end of that, yes. too, you know, they've also made it a lot easier and a lot more consistent for us to farm. With auto farming and Tricaru and all these consistent teams that are able to come out, it's like these things are just coming. Like they're they're coming in, and you know, with with less failure rate means more chance to get more of the item. So I feel like it's going to be pretty consistent. And as Seren was saying, there's, there's two months almost. I, we have so much time. I think that that was you know pretty well spaced out. Mm -hmm. 
I think people are coming back from last year's event where if you farm a couple hours a day, you could at the end of the day get 20 rerolls on a rune. I don't think it's going to be close to that this time. I don't think... I I genuinely think most people will have to... They'll, they'll have to make do with whatever rolls they get. They'll they'll really have to there's a word that I'm missing. What's the what's the word? Prioritize. Settle. Uh, Compromise. Settle? Yeah, that'll do it. They have to settle for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they'll have to settle for a subpar rune potentially. But there are those people that are gonna get 18 speed right off the bat. And then they'll just be able to spend everything else on grinds or anything else they want. So I, I don't think we'll get nearly as many reaps, but I think you can get everything in the store just fine as long as you're as long as you're farming and then still have a decent amount for reaps. Agreed. That's a long way to say I agree with what you guys said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Um, some people were wondering about like priorities for things. Uh, I can't remember everything in the shop, but Devilmon scrolls, summoning stones, and I don't know anything else. I think is kind of optional, really. Rainbow. Mon I don't remember what else there is. That's good. Rainbow Mon can be valuable to you. Um, the Super Angel Mon can also be really valuable to you since it's only 10 for it. Oh yeah, there's reaps. Yeah, two reaps. I mean, reaps are a, a no-brainer. You always get reaps. Um, oh, ancient coins as well. Ancient coins are pretty good too. Yeah. Um, I honestly, the value of the Super Angel Mon and the Awakening Scroll, um, are actually really good value because they're really cheap. Um, I think they're 10 coins each. I think the Awakening is 20. Yeah. Is it 20? I mean, even then, it's like the value 20, on that difference really, compared yeah. to like the value on the Super Angel Mon, it's worth twice as much, I would say. Like really? the, the amount of energy you spend farming something from 1 to 40 is actually pretty significant. So even Fair. if it's like, even if it was 50 coins, it's probably still worth getting later in the event. But since it's like 10 or 20, you just buy it whenever you need it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically, everything in the shop is worth it. Even if you really want the unknown scrolls, those are probably worth it too. But like you can get anything you want. Um, the shop <laughs> side that has the crystals where you spend crystals for scrolls, I think the value on that's fine too. Um, if you're not a spender, probably hold off and buy the one that gives you the runes and the like the actual like really good rewards, which is the every other week. If you're a spender, 300 crystals for seven scrolls. Not yeah. the end of the world. To me, the only one that doesn't have value is the elemental scrolls. That's the only one I, I don't think I'd buy. Because all the, the rest of around. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I like, I like the, the pool. Thing in the game. At least I have the pool control on the seven, the these scrolls. The elemental scrolls are going to be like another, you know, thing I don't need. That's just going to sit I, in my storage and wait to I become... I 200 legendary. elemental scrolls and I buy a blessing usually. And then I only summon that element until I hit an at five. That's fair. Do it. That's just because it's like, efficient, like, two, but it would drive me crazy. Specific units is easier. That's it's actually a really good strategy. I might have to. Well, summoning stones are so hard to get, right? Like, if I could, if I could reasonably save up like ten thousand summoning stones between rotations, I need. Sure, it would be fine, right? That's but like, what eight or nine months to get the two hundred? Yeah, unless you're unless you're achievement farming. If you're achievement farming, it's way faster. Oh, that. Oh, true, true, true. Achievement farming, I think you can do it in three and a half for ten thousand. Still a lot of effort. It's a lot yeah. of time and a lot of effort. Yeah. yeah doing the most and yeah. then you get a 33 percent chance yeah look at dj Holy. <laughs> <laughs> the thing the most is painful thing you <laughs> oh man feels dj man feels ganny man i mean i'd also have to say i wouldn't really be digging this mana either i i'd have no i'd much rather use any of my tokens on anything I'd... but mana I think the mana is just there as like a leftover if you have mm -hmm. literally nothing else to spend it on. I'm re-rolling my room. I'm re-rolling that. But imagine you get it like next yeah. week and then you have another month of seals that you're like, I have 2,000 seals. What am I going to do? <laughs> exactly. I, I think I finally just, I've finally in the last six months hit a point of I cannot consume mana faster than I can farm mana. I, I, it just the number just keeps going up. I'm almost up to like 125 million mana, and I've gone through and powered up everything, done everything I can do. The only thing I can use mana on is summoning, and I, I'm like, I'm against buying packs anymore. So I, like, I can just farm the scroll. I'd much rather spend 30 crystals get a scroll. Spend 30 crystals get a scroll. It's like almost guaranteed with 
with Tricaro and my Giants, it's like I, I know the scrolls are going to come. Do you rather get a lot, hmm? Do you move runes a lot? Um, I do. I, I, I do shift runes a lot. And even then, though, it's like, now I don't even think twice about it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Here, I, I feel like I'm a, I'm a millionaire in Summoner's Wars with not red crystals. <laughs> I'm in the same boat. I have, I'm encroaching a billion mana. Oh my God. <laughs> what the no. heck? Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. All what? hail the mana lord. I have 700, okay. what's the number? 740 million mana right now. Can yeah. can we loan? Can we can people need to become like mono like mana loan sharks? Because I need that like badly. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I, think it's about, like, I, I think I hover about a hundred million, but every <laughs> single week I spend like twelve million mana moving runes. Well, that's because you're G three siege, right? Yeah, I move. Yeah, I move for siege repeatedly. So every siege is like four to five million mana moving runes. Yep. Oh jeez. Back and forth. Yeah, I, I because you move, you move stuff, so you you check if your defenses are up right now, and then you move all the runes off it, move onto an offense unit. And then <laughs> and like, oh man, now we gotta move back. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So you have like multiple sets of twins. You have different types of twins. You move your fastest swift set over and over and over. It's just this is easier. It's more consistent. I do Especially when you're fighting like really days. hard guilds. Like, yesterday we fought SSA, so I moved every single rune every single time I needed to attack. Oh my lord! I was like, oh I'm not, my god, I'm that's I'm commitment though. That's a lot of commitment. It's what it takes. It's what it takes to be in like higher tier seed. I, I take back what I said. I thought I moved runes a lot. And then I, <laughs> nope. I kind of just had a flashback of G3 Siege. And I'm like, yeah, never mind. I don't remove runes nearly as much as I used to. I'm actually mm -hmm. curious. This might be a little off topic. Sorry. But how did the month long FRR affect like top tier Siege? It was early season. So I don't think anyone really cared. That's fair. Okay. Fair enough. Oh. Also, I don't think it really matters to most players in G3. <laughs> 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 anyway, that's fair. In, in that's the top fair. 10 siege guilds, I don't think people really care about mana. Yeah, when you when you hit the billionaires club, it's no longer about uh, how much mana you use to power it up. It's about how much time you used to power up the rune. Mm. Like mana is no thing anymore. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That's it's an interesting discussion that always comes up. It's like I have ten billion mana, or I have zero mana. There's never mm -hmm. like the in between. Nobody yeah. ever has like twenty million, and they're like kind of like <laughs> I mean, going up and down. With that. It's like you have like nothing, or you have so much. I would argue well a hundred mil is kind of in the middle. It's a little more towards the the oil baron side. But like, Sorin's face. <laughs> when you have hundred, like I would kill, kill for twenty. Mana, I would kill like, for you twenty. Don't, you don't need it. <laughs> you're fair. you're never gonna spend it all. Like. You know. And to spend all 100 million mana is difficult. Mm -hmm. right? Like, so the best, like the I would be at the summoning a shopping mall, everything. spending all mm -hmm. of it, summoning everything. You're running a monster entire I have like half a mil, maybe seven, 750? 700. Yeah. Uh, well, it depends if you move runes on and off. Oh, okay. True, true, true. The second. Cost, right? Oh, sorry. I was just going to say the second I hit 10 million, I re rune whatever I can optimize, and then it's back at zero. Like every time I hit ten, nine, ten, back to zero, nine, ten, back to zero, every time. Yeah, I feel like a good, like on a good spending like spree, usually it's about twenty million mana on like a full rune. Like, oh, I just, I, I got a little bit behind on my runes, and I'm powering everything up, and usually it's about twenty million. So like once you get past that twenty million threshold, it's like you can never hit zero again. It's kind of weird. I think the most notable one though is once you cross uh, grinds and gemstone limits. So once you're once almost all your gems are ten plus, and when all your grinds are like six plus or seven, on your offsets, not on your violent will, swift despair sets, but on your offsets. So all of my all of my focus runes are at minimum ten percent plus seven, or they're higher. They're like legend ones. You basically never need purples again. So you never spend on them, and you always sell them. So you sell them for their cost, and you never have to spend the fifty k to use them ever again. So you just start to gain a ton of mana really, really fast. Or like if you're farming artifacts, once you get like your max blue artifacts and you get enough to like run around maybe 120 units, mm -hmm. you just, you never need blue artifacts again. Every purple artifact is a sell at plus three unless you get lucky. But even legend artifacts are still really expensive to roll. They can be. They can be. Most of the time they don't roll past plus six though. Fair. I can't wait right. to be a big kid one day. 
And even then, once you once you, <laughs> I can't wait to be a big. Kid. He's over here talking about selling his purple art. I'm like, hey, I see a purple. Yeah. If I see a really I mean, good blue, I'm if you, like, if you really start farming, like when I started farming, when I started doing siege in G three, like I realized like the biggest difference between me and everyone else in my guild is that my artifacts are terrible. So I just went. I just farmed artifacts. So I farmed artifacts for like. I don't know, 15, 20,000 crystals. And now all my artifacts are at least max blue or higher. It's Jeez. Nice. That's and it's nice. just like, well, now now I just save money again, right? Because when I was doing that, I was powering up every blue with max rolls trying to get there. And then like once you once you reach that point, you start to see your mana go up again. Because it was I was at like 100 mil and it was like dropping down to like in the 60 range. Mm -hmm. And then after you're done that, you're just like straight up. It's just like easy. See, for me, rolling artifacts is the biggest pain in the butt. So I just max out. I have like 400. I, I'm, on, I'm at max or cap right now. So I have 400 purples and I'm just dreading. I like, I literally just farmed artifacts for like weeks straight and now it's just maxed. I don't want to have to go roll it. I'm like dreading it. Um, but like, that's going to make me a, a ton of mana. But going through it is like the struggle for me and actually like powering them all up, seeing what fails. Cause you know, 70% of them are going to fail instantaneously. So. Yeah, I I honestly think the easiest approach to like if you have a ton of them is to just go look at all the blue ones and if they're not like max roll or one percent off max roll, just sell them and start yeah, again. Anything true. that is max rolled, roll it plus six and then just check. If it's good, it's good. Even if it rolls within like, so let's say okay, you have damage mitigation, right? Damage reduction from an element is six percent per roll. If you hit, if you have a five percent starting, you you roll it. You roll it. You get another one you roll it again if it's like 15 out of 18 it's good enough for now right you get three or four of the same one and cer certain ones you'll need more than three or four but you get three or four of that and then after that after that then you can start selling anything that's worse right and keep only things that are better you just have to create the minimum standard which a lot of people haven't done for artifacts they're like my artifacts are so bad i don't know what my minimum standard is so they never make a minimum standard and they just kind right. of like blindly go at it yeah, they just blindly go at it. They're like, this is really good, or this is, I don't know, or this is bad, or generally, I don't know is the answer for most people. For their <laughs> <laughs> I will say that uh, was probably the biggest thing that I had to change recently was I actually had to set aside like two months and only farm artifacts because I couldn't get higher than fighter three. And I've been C2 plus for eight seasons, seasons, and then all of a sudden, Boom, everything. I couldn't survive any attacks. I couldn't do enough damage. I could not get out of Fighter 3. And then I spent two months farming artifacts and and then everything kind of mellowed back out and I went back into my C2, C3 rhythm. And it was just game changing. And I, mm -hmm. I'd probably say that was the last time I struggled with mana was when artifacts came out. And then after that, Tricaro just changed the game. <laughs> I'm just out of crystals. I, I would have mana if I had enough crystals, but I'm just like, nope. I'll just stop shop refreshing. I'm go summon. Yeah, true. How many, how many crystals do you shop refresh a week? I told you. How many I crystals don't... do you shop refresh a week, do you think? I don't just know, fun. a week. I probably do, I don't know, like 100 something a day, and then it just kind of compounds. 100 crystals or 100 refreshes? Crystals? No, it's really, okay, probably per day, it's in there between like 100 and like 200 probably per day. So it, it okay, so on the high end you go fourteen hundred crystals a week in there. So divided by sixty, that's twenty three. I don't know if it's, know if it's twenty three refreshes of two hundred energy per time. That's a Listen, pretty significant amount of mana. Every refresh is probably like a hundred k. So you're you're looking at like two and a half million mana probably. Uh, well, I mean, depending really on how many go well, because like you can have a stretch where like I think two days, two three days ago, I got like. 15 legendary pieces 20 ld pieces like four mystic scrolls and that was great right but then you hit one rune that's decent that you want to roll and that's that dramatically jumps up the cost of it so of shop refreshing yeah because you yeah. get a you're also not gaining mana right right yeah. exactly yeah, well i mean you're, you're auto farming, farming at the same mana. time right no 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 no, no. Wait. Okay, but it's like it's like your crystals <laughs> go down and your mana goes down together right Whereas, like, when you're farming, your crystals go down and your mana goes up and down, depending on what you're rolling as you go. That's so true. at least there's, like, a there's like a slight balance with it. With, with well, I'm still, well, I'm auto-farming, so I'm offsetting it in both directions at the same mm, time. That right? offset is so backward. 
<laughs> that one rune you bought was 650 thousand mana compared to the twenty thousand you got for your 10 runs or that's true it's true i'm not saying it's a good habit i'm saying though i am i okay the only thing i can say is i credit most of my most of my units to shop refreshing specifically i wouldn't have had my neftis without shop refreshing because that's entirely that was a that was from pieces i got upset about something on stream i shop refresh after stream and then neftis showed up so i have there are benefits but there are mostly detrimental things too but the benefit was enough. You have some units, so now you just need more runes. Exactly. I need a, I need Gianna. I, I need I need, I need, I need I mean, the Gianna to go with the Han, and it's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> oh, I I lack all of. I have no Han. I have no. <laughs> I lack all of these things, and it's He's still like, I got no Oberon, no Arda, no Jaeger. I don't Sorry, got any. Borrow Bella real quick. <laughs> oh, the pain. <laughs> <laughs> So much pain. I'll, I'll I'll loan you my Laura. You you can you can borrow. I'll, I'll make it work. I'll make it work. I gotta. I got it. a Laura to loan out. I'll I'll trade the Laura for the figure if anybody wants to make that. Oh, true. <laughs> That's a good trade. If you could That's spend a hundred million mana to duplicate a rolled rune, that would be insane. I know oh, people yeah. with three billion mana that oh, would duplicate their thirty insane. speed runes. That I believe. Oh my gosh. Oh, God. Because the thing is, once you roll one thirty speed rune, you never need another rune ever again. Or like a 28 plus speed rune in every slot. Yeah. I think I, I got a couple. I, I might. I think I have four quad speeds. But the problem is, is two of them are one's a flat HP and the other's a flat defense. And they're both revenge. <laughs> and four and six. So literally they're a set. That are both plus twenty eight speed, but they're both flat, and I'm like, I, I can't get rid of yeah, these because you use them still. So yeah. yeah, and so I like I just kind of throw them on random places where I just want to go fast, but yeah, then the monsters are randomly revenging at people, and they're like, wait, whoa, what's going on here? My this combo <laughs> is on revenge. What, why is this? <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it works. It works. Revenge is good. Um, okay, so I have a question. Um, kind of a topic switch here but I kind of want to get some more like of your guys' experience with things and your opinions on them. Um, early game progression. I know a lot of us aren't early game, but um, <laughs> we, we have a lot of people in our communities who are early game or who start the game and come to us and ask for advice and want to talk about, you know, their progression and how things go. I kind of want your guys' opinions on like how early game was when, when like you started or like when, when any of us started and then like how you feel like it's, it's come a long way. Right. I, I at least, I guess that's a loaded question. I feel like it's come a long way because I remember farming four star runes from Giants and it sucked. Yep. It, yeah. I, yeah. Do you remember when Necro wasn't a thing? Ye oh, yeah. Barely. Barely. Yeah. Very, very, barely. Yeah. I, I didn't understand how Necro worked. And so I thought it was just really, really hard. I never read it. So I didn't understand the concept of multi hits at the time because I was really casual. So I just assumed it was like the hardest thing ever. And then about a year later, uh, I got a friend into the game and they're like, why aren't you running Necro? And I was like, oh, it's just really hard. They're like, what are you using? And they saw my team. They're like, you have no multi hitters. And I'm like, I need those. <laughs> so then I was on like stage four and I could clear all the way. I was like, I was running B tens and I was like, this is so easy. How did I not? I didn't. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was my blonde moment about. Necro. I have a friend who had one rage set that he got from giants when Necro didn't exist. Those are the days and he was like, you know what? Set. I never built a Necro team because he's like, I had my rage set, my Lucians were good to go, and he never did Necro. And I was just like, that was actually a that was a thing. Like Necro, <laughs> there was a whole dungeon that was just not there, not even an equation. When Violent used to be in Scenario, hey. Did any of you guys play when there was just one server? No. I, was one what? I, didn't play, I didn't play back then. Like before the server splits, I, I didn't play back then. Like the oh, I, I started September of 2014. Well, wow. you started really early. Really? You started yeah, right game, after the game came out. Game was released in July 2014. Yeah. So I have like a, it's it's a very, very old account. Where I messed up was is uh, I downloaded it. I played it for like, a week and i was like dude these monsters are so boring i want like cool stuff like 
I want monsters that don't look like people. Like I have a water fairy that looks like a human. I have this this soldier guy. I was like, none of these things look cool. And I couldn't find any way to like see into the future. I couldn't see the monsters. They didn't have that then. It was just you summon them. You hope you get lucky. There were dragons then. What yeah, about the but, dragon? But you have to understand, nobody like there weren't that many people, so it wasn't like you could just look at the chat and see people summoning nat fives. And back then. <laughs> nat fives were even like they were ultra rare it was so hard and like getting was... scrolls was so hard back so then ridiculous. oh my gosh the periods between events we don't have that now but there were period you would you would, entire weeks where you wouldn't have an event you just armed you used you to have yeah. an event every other month. every other week yeah every other yeah they did like a three week of it would be like a two or three week event and we'd have like two or three weeks off and then we'd have another one. It was just like, holy Lord. Yep. And then oh, people waiting so for TOE weird. reset was like the holy grail of Twitch. Like <laughs> it was, it was Sunday arena rush. Everybody came to the same streams or it was TOA. Everyone, everyone watched the same. They're like, these guys are racing. Good luck. Everyone, everyone got their scrolls. Everyone go to channel 65. It's time. <laughs> Raise your dongers. Channel 65. <laughs> everyone just summon at once. <laughs> they would and just be got lucky. walls of nat fives and people crying in chat they didn't get anything and somebody <laughs> mauling because someone else got perna and the usual good times yeah and so that's actually how i came back the the buddy that has that rage set from giants he kind of he, apparently somehow he stumbled on the same game and we've been best friends since like high school and i saw him playing it one day when we were working together and i go dude that game looks sick like, what game is that? And he's like, oh, it's just blah, 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 blah. And of course, he has a Perna. And he's doing dragons with Perna, going ham. And I'm like, dude, this game is cool. I'm going to download it. And then I realized, like, wait, I had already an account that I had created three months ago. So I started out and then stopped for three months and set myself so far behind. And then here I am today. I, I haven't missed a day since that, that full day I came back. <laughs> I took like a three month break also sometime around like a year in I took like a three month break and came back. I'm learning so much lore because I only got here like four years ago. So oh, that's still I, a long time to play like a game. I got, I got Lapis for free. That was cool. You're talking about the lore of Summoner's War? Like how old you were back in the day? Yeah. It's so All right, quick so plug. Much if you want to know more about lore and Summoner's War, you should go watch my interview videos because almost every player there has been playing since the beginning. Oh, like Childish man. and Sean B, for example, are really long time players. Uh, the most, yeah, there's a I lot. Think the hardest character that I like, I regret not getting that magazine for Fami. Oh, <laughs> I was yeah, so mad that I did them. not get that stinking magazine. I should have went to all lengths to get that thing. And I was like, I'll come across a code eventually. They were yeah, selling them for a long good. time after Gone. that, too. But that code only lasted for, for a year. People are still selling them as, as recently as 2018, which was hilarious because all the codes were expired by then. I think oh. I would still buy one just to say I have the magazine. As like a collector, I would do it. Is oh, there like 100%. a spread with Fami in it or was it just like a, a, like a mail-in card? I really don't know. I really I, couldn't tell you the answer. I didn't that, have I that no answer. Idea. I've never actually even seen the magazine. I've tried to Google it and I, I, I guess I should have just gone it's to Famitsu eBay. Famitsu Magazine is yeah, what it's Famitsu. called. Mm. you want to look for it they need but to collab with back. summoners War so we can have fami come back <laughs> fami second awakening didn't that magazine go no. out of business though <laughs> it, probably, it probably is out of business that's what i thought <laughs> somebody said that the reason why okay so if they own because famitsu owns fami as a distribution rights or something right so that's why com to us can't re-release it so Famitsu would have to still be a company that could then give Comtrust the rights to re-release the unit because it's named Whoever after owns the, the magazine, board, right? Yeah, exactly. Because it's named after their business or the trademark. I think so. Interesting. At least that's the way I understand it. I could be wrong though. I'm not sure. I yeah. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. It's not a good He's like, all I know is I wish I had it. All I know is they would have re-released it if it was the same as Fran or Lauren. They would have already done it. So there's got to be a legal reason why they can't. Okay. Question. Since we're talking about early game progression, we're talking about our history and stuff. What do you think for you when, when, a, when a new player comes to your stream and says like, hey, I'm new. Do you have any tips? Two things you'd tell them. It's off the top of your head. Go. Elsie. Second Awaken Crow. Second Awaken Naomi. All right. There we go. Harrison. <laughs> uh, that was so fast. Holy. He knew. I he was know. ready. I, I do this 20 <laughs> times a day. Every day, man. <laughs> Damn. That was. Wow. 
<laughs> uh, first thing I would say is max your towers and do your guild battles. All right, all right. Sir? Um, I would say focus on stats and not rune sets, and then um, God have I, I this might be pessimistic, but I tell people to set reasonable um PvP expectations because I think people get really mad when they don't hit a certain when they think they want to like come into 2020 and like you know bg1 i feel like people get really discouraged when they don't see like immediate you know pvp especially because a lot of players come in to play pvp now um because the game is pushing that it's end game content so hard um i think people get pretty ticked off really fast with uh rta and then kind of split so if you kind of start the game with a good of like a better understanding of pvp is going to be an uphill battle probably always then they won't get as triggered and quit the game. That makes sense. My first question is usually Visa or MasterCard. And my second question is, well, what's your spending <laughs> limit? <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Usually it's like, oh, what do I have to do to get good at the game? I'm like, how much money you got? Yeah. Yeah. What does it take to get good at the game? Well, Visa or MasterCard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the real question should be, do you have a black card? And if you do, <laughs> good luck. You can make it there. Got this. You Let's go. Make it there. Use Amazon coins. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of different things that are pretty nice about it though. Overall, I feel like the early game things that I think are best would be like use your resources. Like you have resources that are limited. Use them like for two A's and stuff like that. It's like if you're not sure what to do with your two A stuff, like you're getting close to max energy, ask someone what they think. Ask for yeah. advice. I think Definitely. my two tips are always watch Sean Beast uh like starter how to play the game video and then <laughs> after you've got all the broad advice and you want to apply it to your own account ask somebody else afterwards for specific mm -hmm. advice yeah. because like you can always point someone towards a guide but there's always going to be like small things where people just don't know or they don't really like understand how to translate that to their account and it's like that's when you come ask the streamer you don't ask the streamer for like the ginormous generalized advice you ask the streamer for like specific things that are detailed to your account where you're like i need to know this yeah. i don't understand yeah. this Why I will say that's the, that's the hardest question what should i do next um well what do you want to do next do you have a goal do you have something in mind <laughs> is it pvp related is it pve related I I have no idea where you're at or what you're doing with your day today. How are you? <laughs> yeah. I also recommend people to not think that Nat 5 solve all your problems. A lot of people think you're going to summon a Nat 5 and okay, whatever it is, it's going to clear a B10 or a B12 or it's going to I'm going to I got a Nat 5 so I'm going to throw it in every single team. Um a lot of people do that. You you go onto newer players accounts and they're running like I don't know, a sec med in something or like it's cool that you got a Nat 5, but you need to know that like I don't know, 60% of your units aren't going to, or the Nat 5s aren't really usable at all in early game. So, yeah, that's something well, I think people take for granted. people to six-star something instead of five-starring 10 units is like, oh, that hurts so much when I see it. I'm like, yeah. oh, no. <laughs> Who, poor child, come here. Who advised you? <laughs> Why you do this? Why you you? Do I will this? go ban them from my stream. <laughs> Why you five-star slime and you beginner? <laughs> um, I thought... I thought penguins were op when i first started the game i cried when i fed the i think i fed a fire penguin and i cried i don't know why i thought that was good but i did chat I cried when she thought it was a six star mav this is also the same chat though when i got my varad and i had already six star tyron they're like yeah you totally need to six star both of them i had like three six stars at that point i had a rochi tyron and varad Oh wow. Um so I'll I'll touch I guess on on my big my big one um with towers. Towers, towers, towers. Like I don't understand how it's it's not a known thing that these are stats that are given to you at all times for all content. Like to not finish an HP tower means you don't have 20 extra percent HP. To not finish an attack tower means that you don't have 25% attack on every single monster. When you're in TOA, when you're in Giants, when you're in Dragons, when you're in Steel Fortress, I, I can't express how important your towers are and how they affect your game. Even in PvP, if you have half of your towers done and then you're going and battling someone else who's done the work, put in the time, finish the towers, you have half less of a rune than that person does out of the start of this battle. 
you are already starting this battle with an unsharpened sword and a stick in this hand. And the other brought his shield that was made of cast iron, and he has a spear, so you can't even get close to him. And you were like, you thought it was okay to show up to battle. (laughs) Finish your towers. They they just make such a difference, and they'll push you so much further, even in TOA. If you're stuck on one level, that extra percentage of any any stat, it's going to push you to that next stage. It's going to help you, I promise. And it's not ever going to go away, and it doesn't cost mana. And most of the time, you're probably sitting on 10 arena wings. Do your arenas. And they just made it easier, which is even better. I feel attacked by both him telling me to do my towers (laughs) and that I'm sitting on 10 arena wings. Because I totally (laughs) fall into that. (laughs) It's so important. And people just don't realize it. And they they, they don't realize that this is just pure stats. Pure stats that never go away. They don't fluctuate. They, you you can't be take they can't be taken away. You can't violent proc away twenty five percent. You got you gotta have you just gotta do them. They, they're I just so don't important. have a max light tower, but I think that's for reasons that make sense. <laughs> Understandable. Fair. Just just don't eat it. I'm never gonna pull that light nap five, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's gonna really? happen. Hey, you don't have any four stars. What about that Chris damage though? What about I don't Fran? have a Chris. Oh, you don't use Fran. I Brandon. rarely ever use Fran. To be perfectly it. honest, I rarely ever use Fran. I, I like, I'm legit. I leveled that tower just for my Fran. I was like, I mean, I have Jaeger, Arda, Laura, and Weja, and I was, I did it for my Fran because I was yeah, like, for Jaeger. That's <laughs> that's so no, it's for Jaeger. Fran, Fran, Fran also has a hundred base attack. <laughs> <laughs> like, like one percent on two grinds is probably better. <laughs> No, I, I don't know. Fran is Fran is a pretty strong pick in RTA and always will be, but like, just don't really need her. She's that, that high violent proc monster, I tell you. It's like, I, I fight a Fran and I, I just expect her to violent proc. I know it's coming. I'm like, oh, Fran's going to violent proc. Just, just expect two turns. I think yours is juiced because mine's not doing that. No, whoa, 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 whoa. I said I watched the Fran. No, oh. my side. Oh, I see, <laughs> I, I see, I see. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody else's Antares versus my Antares. Oh, my Vertiheal with triple revenge, never revenging. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. My my bird revenge is a lot. It's on violent revenge, one hundred resist. <laughs> oh, <and> it, <laughs> mine's on double revenge will, and mine revenge is entirely like- designed to be a giant middle finger. <laughs> Mine waits till the end of the match when he's the last monster. Then he'll like revenge, revenge, revenge. I'm like, dude, the game's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Overall, there's so many good things in the game now. Um, I want to bring up one last thing for like quality of life stuff because we talked about what it was like and kind of our our favorite things now and like recommendations for people. Um, I want to change to the to the rune optimizer. Uh, mm-hmm. like the manager in game, the manager mm-hmm. in game. Oh. And I think that this is something that effectively could be really useful for a lot of players and completely irrelevant for a, for a bunch of them. I would like them to add the concept of exclude certain substat. I can get yeah, that, that would okay, be wait, nice. What? Yeah. Does that make sense? So like yeah, when you search for a rune in the manager, you could be like, rune does not have blank stat on it. Mm. Yeah, that'd be better for min-maxing. So, I, I, so basically... Yeah targeting like rune targeting it's just a faster way to sort specific things like if you yeah. have okay i have like i think 1300 runes right but when i when i filter it down to violent will swift despair i think it's like still about 650 or 600 it's just yeah. like it's just too much to look through whereas i could just like i could exclude all runes with you know what would make that even easier yeah. would just be to have a like a little box that would pop out like all the little boxes and you could it would be a multi-select so like speed attack crit damage or like you could you just little little squares you could just click so you could actually i, I also want your- our manager to be like epic sevens where you can select mul- multiple sets at once so oh, like yeah, i can look at my violent and will runes at the same yep. time so that's i can choose really like, cool that'd i can choose i can look through all of them and then i know like my slot one for violent versus my slot one for will like where where can i can i find that comparison that's it's just a time yeah. like, you can always be- equip it 
or like temporarily equip it and then go check the other set but it's just easier to just like look at them back to back right yeah anything that yeah, streamlined or have them just lined up in the like category with violent and despair or whatever the problem is i think the rune manager is it, it's i don't think it's designed to be changed like you look at it it's very as is i'm not i'm not sure how they would you know what? that just make a new one make a new one i'm in I, I i am not here telling you that we have to accept things the way they are i am telling you to make a difference <laughs> that we can change it be the change be the change elsie be the change <laughs> but when you get one they'll change it i believe i believe i got i got i didn't ng one but like i got my wings <laughs> yeah when you ng one they'll fix it uh, now, now you, now uh, you, there's the motivation i need you to ng one now so they top thousand the right now will that hold <laughs> nope yeah, I'm at. I mean, I think I I did my ten wings. I went nine and one. Well, correction, I went. I lost my first one, won the next nine, and somehow I landed like one, one thousand fifty five or something ridiculous. And I was like, okay, this looks cool. I for now. Came back in placements, it hurt. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't done mine yet. I'm. I have all half of my stuff is is unruined because of special league. So like I was uh, looking yeah. through it yesterday and it's like has like my Savannah has two runes. My like everything's two, one, four, three. It's like uh I was too afraid to touch anything. Like I just got everything working again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, I'm not doing special league this season. I was like, I'm retiring special league. I'm just gonna put everything in to the next season and here it is. Honestly, yeah. if that's the way you do it, what you should do is you should just take your 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 JSON file and upload it to a like an alternate so what i i have three swore farm accounts well four my first swore farm account is my main one with all my siege units deleted now my second one yeah. is strictly my rta units my third one is my special league and my fourth one is a test account for whoever i'm rerunning for at the time Smart. so like if you want to do that what you do is you create a swap file or a, a json file with your second with your second account and you label it your rta account you know exactly where all the runes are so you can just move them back really quickly you can also take that and just upload it straight to, to the optimizer if you prefer. I did the, I did that, you, do, yeah. you move everything onto your, your special league teams. You play your special league and then you move on. Because special league, if you can play RTA special league to C3 level, you should every single season because you don't drop out of C3. Yep. If you hit That's 1350 fair. points and there are less than three days to the end, you will always be C3. It's just like it's a guaranteed amount of points. So huh. if you care anything about skins, if you care anything about transmogs, it's 100% worthwhile. I hope they add more soon. You. God. They said every two seasons, right? I know. It's just so long to wait. I need that I need that Laura skin so bad. And that's gonna take and like two years. Back to yeah. <laughs> Laura's gonna get another buff whenever Christina gets her buff. Or probably before Christina, so I believe of skins. I love the new monkey skin. The monkeys are amazing. It They're like so cool. good. I'm so I just excited. want to see the animations. I love I love all the skin, mm -hmm. but for me, the selling point is always the animations. Yeah, for sure. Or the the new camera angles they're doing. They could have a lot of fun with that. Camera angles? Did I miss they, something? They introduced yeah, them different, with the different animation angles. So like the oh yeah, 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 yeah. Animations, yeah. Yep. All I heard was more more memory on my phone. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. Power, my friend. More work for my it. phone. The process. Look, I can see that computer you got there. I see the fancy light. You can get a tablet. <laughs> <camera. laughs> Same. And let's be real, blue blue stacks isn't all that great. It's a little no, lag if you have a couple trees on your island. Even with the supercomputer. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh that's a blue stacks optimization issue. That's yeah, a, for uh, sure. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, sorry, I wanted to bring up that one last like quality of life thing. Uh do you guys have any small quality of life changes you guys would want to recommend or add or talk about quickly before we move on to the next topic? My number uh, one complaint, sorry, my real quick, my number one complaint for all of life is that if they don't at some point address that TUA, TUA hard and TUA hell all have the same rewards, I'm going to lose my shit. That's fair. Okay. okay. Fair. Yeah. That's fair. It's like, feel the same way about login rewards. TOA hard to get the same exact thing that I did for TOA normal. It's and not I had worth to spend the time. three times as much time. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, um, to avoid what you're doing, Tyler, of having four separate Swore Farm accounts, I would say just give us preset rune layouts that we could do. So if you want a 
a Vio Revenge and a Triple Revenge Verde. You can just press a button and swap between them in RTA. So you or just have two be. sets of runes, baby. Or just have two Verdes like me, but that doesn't always work. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of games do have a saved, like, equipment set. Like, you could save a set. Um, you would think that you could save it or favorite it or something and label them or put them into... Do a lot of mobile games have it, though? I, that's I know a, a lot of question. MMOs have it. They but that's do. because, like databasing the memory on mmo is very different from what we have right quality of life give us a pc port hey oh <laughs> that's a big oh, ass honestly, that is you know that's gonna happen when the game actually starts to dip they're gonna be like all right guys here's the pc port yep <laughs> no that for real though if you have a pc port i really want them not to I rush it get an mm-hmm. actual pc version of this game so i can just do it normally please that's all i ask I would love for them to see like a full my rework this easy. of everything with all of those quality of life things if they do a PC port. Yeah. Yeah. PC port, I think, is an amazing idea if they do it right. I, there's, there's nothing more frustrating about like things coming out in games and they're just like not tested and they don't work. And it's like, why do I even play this? Yeah. <laughs> why did I take myself down this road? Yeah. What's yeah, the there's a lot game? of things. Outriders came out, changes. and apparently people are having plenty of bugs. But that's every triple game these triple A game these days. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's because uh, games don't actually come out; they just get an early release. And you know, when they actually come out, they're basically just a, a mislabeled early release. True. Would you rather have a game come out though that's at like seventy percent, or would you rather wait another two to four years? Wait, I don't know. Two to four years. You know yeah. what I want? I want a teaser. I want a teaser for the game. I want a like a like a Silent Hill PT, like a playable teaser. I was the best and then I want the game to come out like a year or two later when it's yeah, actually. I want the game to be finished when it comes out. I'm mean, like, mm-hmm. it's always like it's just common now for them to release a game and then be like an expansion in four months. And I'm like, mm-hmm. what the heck? This game just came out. You guys had this content already pre-made. Why didn't you just release it with the game mm-hmm. and then spend the next year making an expansion you guys are just pumping people for their money at this point yeah that's fair totally off topic but i think my issue with AAA games like when we talk about that like games not coming out early access not being complete i think games should be shorter how I short though one of, the, one of the biggest problems is games are really long like AAA games are really long right You're right so they take a ton of time to create i think they some, should be shorter so they actually short. get finished but then they're going to still be a $60 game for like a 20 hour play time. Would you really want to do be, that? It's going to be an enjoyable 20 hour play time though. People are going to complain. People are going to complain no matter what. I like so. to yeah, play no, something. No matter how you cut that cake. It just yeah. like, there's no real fine line because it's, it's, it's like buying a ticket to go to a movie. You could buy an Avengers movie ticket and get a three hour movie, or <laughs> you can buy the Disney, whatever. That wasn't like the big, big Disney movie. And it's an hour and a half long. See, I'm cheap. I like games that have a sh- like a, a lot of replayability, or like you know, you're a completionist who wants to spend 120 to 200 hours on a game. Like that's where I always land in these kind of games. That's why I like uh, Korean mobile games because they're long-winded grinds. Uh, but there are games that don't need to be that long. You know, there are games that should be 20 hours. But I don't think that you know necessarily. I don't know. I, I guess I need I need there to be like some games like that. But like in general, I still need to have a game that's gonna like make me struggle for a while mm-hmm. at least the the problem is most games these days want to be like gta 5 that has a decade-long lifespan and mm-hmm. they're still making millions and millions of dollars every day like eight years after it came out and re-pumping out the same content just mm-hmm. with exactly. human texture yeah true every um, game just wants too much there's no simplicity in anything anymore <laughs> but that's why games like, games like firewatch if any of you guys have played Firewatch, Firewatch is absolutely game. incredible game. Short game, amazing, well done. I mean, given it's a walking sim, so it's like there's only so much you can do for it, but there's mm-hmm. still like achievements for it, right? I just think I just think specifically AAA games, specifically AAA games. I think the approach for them is they want to release so much when they release the game. I I'm I'm fine with the concepts of like DLCs coming out with things. It's like as long as the game itself is good, the DLCs can come afterwards, right? Because mm-hmm. then it's an option, right? Yeah, yeah, to continue. Like, it, I, I do like that. I think it's just like the spacing. It's like you guys came out with this so close to when this game, like this game just came out. And that's where I think they really need to like, they're walking that really fine line between just going there for the money, like creating content for money or creating quality content. Yeah. 
they're definitely they're definitely exploiting it. I would agree with that entirely. With that AAA tag, though, it's it kind of sets big expectations. So when a studio slaps a AAA, like when EA purchases maybe an indie title that they want to bump up the AAA, I don't know how they, I don't know how it actually works. They might do that sometimes. Um, you know, they might expect a lot more from the game than just a ten-hour walking sim. Yeah. Yep. All right. Speaking of making things super complicated and making things uh, overly simple. Uh, let's talk about some light buffs and nerfs. Um, I want to talk more on a creative style. I want to talk about things that are different that you would like to see changed in the game for units, whether it's kits, mechanics, or anything of the above. No nerfs. We skip nerfs today. We go buffs. Like buffs, it. buff styles, and you need creative ideas for mechanics. Okay, Whatever I have one. Talk about. I have one thing I think would be really cool, and there's I, there is another game that has a unit like this. I was thinking of things like similar to Metronome and Pokemon, but more like Silas from League of Legends, where he steals an ulti. If you had a unit that could either cut mimic or like steal a third skill of any unit on the field, I think that'd be really, really cool. It'd have to have an interesting skill too with it, but being able to copycat would be a really, really weird, but like detrimental. If you made it fast and it could steal something like a like a CC from something or it disabled something like those kind of like Pokemon mechanics, I think would be really, really cool to have in the game. Hmm. I've been calling it for, for years, ever since the unit came out, buff a Belio to where he can't get cut by a Vioproc on his past. <laughs> or just nerf <laughs> Triana. How about yeah, that? Seriously. Yes, he doesn't cleanse. He doesn't do anything crazy like that. He just heals a little bit, you know? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Just with a little bit of attack bar boost with it. No big deal. It's like nothing. People Nobody are saying thinks about that stuff. What about yeah. what about mechanics where like we can utilize crit for other units? Like we've talked about this a lot in different places, but like what about critical heals? I'm down. So would it like I'm trying to think, would it scale off crit damage or would it scale off more attack I or I don't know. Just the, the just the concept of it just allows you to build here. units differently and to utilize runes differently. Right? Mm hmm I do like that because they do have the crit animations for heals. So I don't know what goes behind that. It would just be a boost in the match. Imagine Lulu oh, crit healing. That, that would be so fucking funny. <laughs> it's like, oh, you get that Lulu still one crit and heal, does I damage, did and then heal. throw her arm up right now. <laughs> oh, man, that'll be sick. Yo, Molly that'd would be, be worse. Molly would be worse, oh, for sure. no. Yeah, it better. Even, like, critical heal heal abilities. Like, if you, if you crit on a heal, like, it has, like, a like a bonus effect to it, for example. So let's say, like, let's say you have 100 crit um, on a unit with your 50 base crit. If you critically if you critically heal, it heals like a portion of your crit damage towards another unit or something else. Dude, like Braha would be so busted. What if it had a skill where <laughs> I would use Braha every? I'd be like Braha. <laughs> what if I had a conditional cleanse? Then that'd be weird. Conditional um, cleanse. Like if you crit, if you crit on the heal, then you could cleanse. Yeah, I mean, something. just like mechanics in general. Like, like it doesn't have to be strictly what I said or anything like that. But I just mean like the concept of critically healing. And then getting other like unique mechanics that come with it could be could be an interesting thing. I like that. It would, I it think... would definitely be one of those. I want to test this in like a special league balance patch because it mm -hmm. would be fun. Right? I think I... there are some things like that in the game, just like conditional. I don't think there are conditional heals, but conditional skills like the occult girls S one sleeping, they get an initial turn, or Sekhmet S three missing, she gets cooldown back. But they, I don't think they've put that into heals yet. So yeah, yeah, I'd... heals would be cool. It's definitely in the game, just not in that style. I like the concept. I think it's fun. Yeah. Me too. Um, I don't know. Just other ways to see units being able to be built differently, right? Because, like, supports and, like, like healer supports specifically are built two ways. You're either built really tanky <laughs> or, you're, and, or you're built with attack because you're an attack scaling healer and then in the off chance you get the sub diversity of like being 100 resist as well yeah so i'd it. like to see That's it but uh, those are your three options i'd like to see it play out on like a triana like a crit damage triana because that's a healer that builds crit rate 
um, and does actually pretty good damage, like sleeper level damage, has a first turn sleep. And then if you could crit like on a heal from second ability, because that heal is so dinky, it's like, eh, yeah, I heal, but I'm about to get blown up next turn anyway, so this didn't really matter. So that would be kind of cool to have the mechanic of like if she did crit heal, it gave her that just that little extra bit of oomph. Um, yeah, I think but, that would be cool. But that kind of goes along with the mechanic that I would like to see kind of changed. Um, I think it would help something like when Fran goes violent happy because you know there's just those matches. She'll violent proc three turns in a row, and you're just like, dude, that's a heal every other turn. That's a cleanse. That's an attack break. You now have immunity, attack buff. Like you just did everything in six turns, and you completely shut me down. What I think would be cool is if there's like a heal block mechanic and when you skill to cleanse, instead of healing and cleansing, I think that the heal block should still be blocked and it just cleanses all abilities rather than it being like you get the heal yeah. and the cleanse. Like that's bogus, man. So that, that depends on units because units have different orders for those things. Like some units heal first and some units heal after. So, I, yeah, I, I see what I, you mean. I still don't think I know a single one that cleanses and then like heals before the cleanse. Uh, I think Miang heals before the cleanse. I think Lulu also heals. Uh, I think not Lulu everybody cleanses it. Not every, some, some units. Some units heal first before the cleanse. There, there are two of them. Chow, there, I so believe. Chow. Well, Chow, Chow's Chow's applies at the end of his turn. That's why yeah. he cleanses mm-hmm. at the end of his turn. Well, so Miang's is not also a true cleanse because it's one turn. Mm-hmm. Miang hmm. cleanses first. Mm. Yeah, I feel that it's it's just a funky mechanic because it's like, well, what was the point of even bringing heal block to the to the battle? Because it's just gonna get cleanse healed anyways. At least like there has to be some kind of middle ground. I feel like that's double slided an advantage to the person with the cleanse because Would you... now I had no reason to bring heal block whatsoever. Would you like to see more of the Bale unique debuff where there's the anti cleanse? Yeah, the anti cleanse. Yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. Someone hit me with something weird from the wind, the new wind Oni character, the wind fox thing. And I was like, what well, does this do? Karma. karma debuff is like a, like a fake silence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what does this do? And I was like, I know it has something to do with my second or third ability. So I'm just going to basic attack this thing off until. <laughs> Yep. And actually, right after, I was like, I got to go look this up because I, I was going in blind. Karma's a great idea. I like the way that they, they worded it, but it just ended up not being as... A, a lot of people were saying originally when we first saw the, the skills, oh, that sucks, that sucks. But I thought it was going to be really interesting because it's it's preventing you from using a skill. It should be more impactful, but then it ended up, I guess it's just... it. Everyone was right. It just doesn't do enough. Um, you can just so, eat it too easily. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. If it was a higher percentage, way. maybe if they upped the percentage of uh, HP you lose, maybe it would be more vi- viable, but I don't know. Then you're basically getting a free kill on that with that unit, so then it would be OP. You can also, it, kill? Uh, it can't kill. Okay. It killing, I also don't think makes a difference. I really, I spent a long time discussing and thinking about that yesterday. Really? I'm pretty sure that if it killed, it still wouldn't matter. Right? It makes it better, at least. Yeah, that they need to read. Uh, that poor wind one. That poor wind one. <sighs> I don't know. I, I said, like, karma should apply. <sighs> I don't know. I, I said, like, karma should apply. Like, when you apply karma, it should also apply something else. Like, you know how, like, slow debuff is, like, 30% speed. Karma should be, like, minus 10% speed, minus 10% this, and, the, and this, like, silence bonus mechanic. Because then if it hits, you at least have to choose, like, do I want to lose these stats temporarily? Or do I want to cleanse it or do I want to eat it? Right. Like there's there's just no punishment because like so many units rotate out of it so fast. Yeah. yeah. It's like it was there and then yeah. it was gone. Should but like imagine, longer... imagine if you karma somebody and it like it slowed their speed 15%. It slowed their it like lowered their attack by like 20%. It lowered their defense by 20%. Like that's mm-hmm. suddenly that's a lot more significant of a buff because you deal less damage, you take less damage, and you are more susceptible because you're slower, right? Your turn order changes too. That's true. I do More, hope, though, like to see a monster that steals passive abilities. I think that would be kind of... There are so many passives in Summoner's Wars, and there's not, like... There's way more passives than there are counter-passives. We need more, way more oblivion. Sense. 
way more like, oblivious. Every monster that comes out now has some hidden secret agenda with a paragraph long skill and then it does this extra thing and we have two monsters that have oblivion that are that can be like easily obtained the third monster is an aoe oblivion that what like 10 people have i've, I've never even seen it in battle <laughs> so it's like i feel like oblivion or things that counter passives are a little offset yeah there definitely needs to be a more attainable AOE Oblivion unit. I don't Although think AOE not... Oblivion is really that good. I'm going to be honest with you. See, but the rest I, of the I kit would... would have to save for that. You're right. It's like, not the only thing that would, yeah, make that unit good. But AOE in, there's... in general, it's not as good as people think it is. Like a lot of the time, your biggest strength is from really single targeting something, right? True. If you look at Guild Wars, you look at Siege, it's really about single targeting because attack bar manipulation, uh, uh, AI manipulation is really relevant. Right in RTA, it's not about AOE stripping unless you're like using Water Ryu, right? Like up until Water Ryu came out, AOE was good, but single target was always still really strong, right? That's why yeah. Thor Skill 2 was always still like a good first turn unit. That's why Lauren was really good for a long time because that single target control and being able to like set up a 4v3 is like just as effective on turn one. Yeah. Right. And the only reason why people were using Chiwu is because he had a speed lead. It wasn't necessarily because of a strip. I mean it helped but obviously I don't like a I, I'm in the same boat I don't use AoE strippers anymore I'm just living off of Okeanos and and you know the Beast Riders but I don't know I still think that more Oblivion would be better but you're right it probably doesn't have to be um AoE whoa I mean I stand behind my Juno I don't day. have one. I wish. <laughs> Juno is life. <laughs> she saved me on many, many occasions. I'm going to have to give my, my boy DJ Bizzle a shout out because he put me up on that Juno game one season and she never left my box ever again. <laughs> so many Juno solos. Juno's so nice. Especially now with how Oki is just everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. Vampire Juno. <laughs> <laughs> after after we talked about it on that podcast i watched so many replays looking for people with vampire juno just to see if i could figure out their stats and those things are wild Ooh, the people who uh, are running I, vampire I, juno I, I, have really really crazy stats on her <laughs> i only wish i could attain such stats. such stats i will take a juno for my transcendent scroll on friday thank you very much or a leo either one <laughs> I got Leos. I think I've actually summoned four because I fed one as a as a blood. So I have summoned four Leos. Oh, the realization just set in. I'll trigger people by saying I've summoned three Savannas. That works yeah. nowadays. Still hunting one of those too. Yep. Mm. Oh, buff mechanics. Uh, Elsie, you were gonna say something. Really? Uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's me. gone. The idea it's ran so, away. It's, and it's gone, guys. And it's gone. It's gone. Um, hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say I had general. I was gonna say I'd hope for uh karma to get buffed because the string masters got buffed recently as well, and I think that's a great buff. Are you the, using them? No, but I've been absolutely hammered by the fire one. Oh my god she's so good 107 I, think I, I don't think they're that strong really in special league they were really good 15 percent for 15 percent boost is really hard to sing 107 to. base speed though i only lost to one person who used it and it's because both of his pushers are over 325 speed so it's like i can't outspeed that um, oh the other God. one that I lost to was a water one, and it's because I misplayed it, not because like it moving first actually mattered. I just picked the wrong unit to fight. I was like, ah, I'm gonna try to kill this, and I was like, ah, that was a mistake. I still think that could be fun for siege and four star towers mm -hmm. potentially. I don't know what their AI is like, but I, think I, still I don't think she's that good in one. RTA though. I just summoned the light one. Ooh. Ah, you're like me. I summoned her like last week, and I was like, "You're not the dark one." Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Not a Guild Wars speed lead. That's so busted. That's so busted. <sighs> She's all right, I guess. <laughs> People talking about Geo Gun. 
Jogan's Jogan really is so fun good. right now. Jogan is so good. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, uh, skill two into skill three is pretty crazy. <laughs> yep. It's like innate Vioprox are pretty good or something. <laughs> you mean turn resetting abilities? What? That's, no, it's absurd. No. No, no, no. I, I, I don't want extra turns today. That's no. my slogan. I, I just want one turn. Those. That's all. <laughs> One speed turn. buff is crazy. Speed buff is honestly just a crazy buff. It's so mm -hmm. strong, and if you're an additional damage Andy, it's even better. <laughs> <laughs> like additional damage, and then you have speed buff now. It's like wow, crazy. You're immune to so much damage. I will say it, it's been a. I've been seeing a lot more speed buff recently, and one mechanic that I know a lot of newer players don't ever understand is that speed buff, it's not like how the other speed mechanics work. It actually takes your full speed mm -hmm. and amplifies it by that 33%. So it's like, if you're 200 speed, that's 33%, 30%. 200. Yours 30%. But speed buff's 30%. Oh, sorry. I thought it was 33. So 30% mm -hmm. of 200. And it's like, huh, wait a minute. That, that's that's, that's uh, completely different from any other speed in the game because every other speed is amplified by the base speed even swift set it's only amplified by the base set or the base stat of that monster so it, when i heard that a couple years back i was like wait what that means i've been doing my math wrong this whole time and then now speed I'm buff and speed down is so good like both the buffs together are just insane it's it's game changing game changing level speeds that's that's definitely something that can be confusing because that that works for all stats like that because even leader skills not a lot of people know they just go off base mm -hmm. yeah that throws off a lot of people's tune for sure yeah because they're like oh i have 50k hp plus 50 percent well no you didn't get 25k additional no. hp <laughs> you got 5,000 extra yeah. hp <laughs> wow what do you mean by 75k molonged in one shot what do you mean <laughs> busted <laughs> Do you think that they need to change the way that it shows your towers plus your guild plus you, you know how it has that list of bonuses? Yeah, it just uh, throws the list at you. Yeah, I feel like they need to they need to consolidate that because I think it it does confuse people when you have all these segmented buffs. What I mean, would you I think of a like because the green plus stats. What would you think of like a separate line of like bl in blue for like RTA buff or guild buff or something like that? Yeah, I think a second line would be nice, or at least uh, somewhere, somewhere in there to just see with your towers, with your guild, how just what those are, numbers are looking what like. What the actual number is? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm just throwing 25% into my 2200 attack. I, I hope I got this calculation correct. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you're speed tuning, if like you have a bestet and you want to make sure that your illusions don't get cut in arena. You know, there's a little bit of a speed difference there, and with speed tower, it's it, you just okay. I have one more speed oh, evolution because of any of hours trying to tune that and trying to figure out like why did this monster cut me? This calculator told me that this is impossible to be cut. And then you're like, <laughs> add a couple more speed, and you still get cut. And you're like, dude, I'm done. I'm over yeah. this. I don't want any more. No more of this business. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> Yeah, it'd be nice. Just more like transparency for people who don't really understand like the really detailed mechanics. Uh, my other fear with that though is like for some people that could be like very overwhelming and off-putting. Like too much information on the screen. It could be on a back lot. screen or something, but it 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 definitely. I think if you don't think about all these things, there's there's a lot to think about when it comes to artifacts now how artifacts affect i mean obviously artifacts can't overlap with those things either but there's just so many things you're thinking about your base stats your rune improvements then your guild and that and that and that there's a lot of information now that goes into just what one unit does and i think that you never really there's no point in the entire game where you get the whole picture like there's just nowhere you actually see that um and so just maybe having some snapshot somewhere even if it's not on the main page if it's on an, a secondary or third page um, when you're going through the rune manager, just to see what the the fundamental damage is, or even if you could have like a test mode for damage, instead of like we all go to fame on right and we just like throw up a defense break or something just to see how much damage we're gonna do. But like you really never have a place where you can just test damage. I think that arena, would be cool. You test your own arena defense. 
Yeah. I know, but it's it's, it's still kind of. Way. I feel like if they had, uh, I've I've had I played other games where they have test dummies, um, where you can test those things specifically in Final yeah. Fantasy fourteen. It would be um, nice but, if you can set specific stats on things, right? Like exactly, but, you know, yeah. The best you can do is you can use damage calculators. Yeah, yeah. Right. it's nice to see things in the game and not have to constantly use third part. You know, constantly go to third party things. The reason we're using third party things is because the game isn't giving us enough to work with. If they mm -hmm. had it in game, it'd be easier. Yeah, yep, totally agree. I mean, and technically the the arena is already there because they have the thing that you can test skills in. So like. Oh yeah, the animation. Battleground is technically there already. It's just a matter of implementing like some form of damage calculation to that. But what really gets me and makes it hard against testing on your own arena defense is like, sometimes it like you like pause and catch it and see it, like what did I do? And it's like they really just need to like record a battle and then be able to play it back in some mm -hmm. sense. Especially like when you're trying to help other players learn like why did this happen this way? And they're like, Well, you were supposed to go and like, yeah, but this happened. Well it's hard to catch that this is this is where it's at because we don't have any kind of play. So, so you're mm -hmm. a streamer. <laughs> you have yeah, many yeah. VODs. <laughs> hey, go back and watch it. <laughs> Cut it. It's like a <laughs> ten second clip. Yeah, but I don't know. Something like that in the game would be, would be nice to have. But I feel it would be nice if it was in the game. True. Fair, fair, fair. Hmm. I don't know. All right. So we talked a lot about different kind of things we would want in the game, mechanics wise, as well as um, just, you know, quality of life things we'd want added, you know, replay features and stuff like that, abilities to like test more things out. Um, I think it's time to kind of open questions to the community. So if anyone has any questions in chat, make sure to just tag somebody in on the podcast and you guys can read it out and go through it um by the way Tyler, i have nothing you... else in particular i want to talk about yet did but, you want me uh, to show the guardian stuff yeah yeah yeah. can you show the okay. guardian stuff so okay. there's a metal a backpack and something else you said yeah there's a metal uh i've had this back here behind me so my white balance is gonna go crazy but um so they it's a it's a coffee tumbler so it's actually really nice it's like textured and stuff and then this is an interesting thing that somebody pointed out to me that the Guardians Club stuff is all going to have this yellow kind of, I don't know if you could tell it's yellowed, but it's a yellow font. So apparently everything, even though it looks white, these are actually all yellow runes, like rune types. Oh, that's cool. So it specifically mm -hmm. has its own unique uh, tone to it. And then the, the metal is my favorite thing, honestly. And so it says the, okay. It says uh, Summoner's War Guardians Club 2021. It's going to be a little out of focus there. But then on the yeah. back side, it's the Guardian 3 thing. And it's like, it's literally like a, like a sports medal on a little thing. That's, That's super cool. cool. I want a backpack. And they even, they, backpack. they put it in a little like velvet box and everything. Oh, yeah. real fancy. <laughs> That's super cute. I'll take my, uh, my award of valor <laughs> i'll take the laura figure if anyone knows how well, to i think draw. right now guardians club is only available in north america or is it only us i think i think it's was canada not an option i don't it remember should... i didn't check the way i, I the way i understood it was us and canada but i'm not okay. sure so if you guys want to know how to you know apply to that etc i believe it is in the official summoners war discord if you're watching mm -hmm. the youtube video then i'll put the link in the chat below or in the what is it called? The uh, description below. <laughs> Somebody says only US. Okay. Okay. Yeah. A lot and they should be opening it back up. From what I know, they they plan to open it up for more applicants later on. So. They didn't give any stickers. That's true. I'm surprised they didn't give stickers or pins or anything like that. They usually give mm -hmm. those out. Yeah, it's true. I will say this was like a whole new set of items. Like I don't, I've never seen that kind of backpack. It's usually like the pool string backpack. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like, I was like, man, they they went and got like a a jam sport over there. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. Ah, it'd be like that. But yeah. If anyone has any questions in chat, just let us know. If anyone wants to talk about anything, bring up stuff, get anyone's opinion on anything. Um. What, what is, is the, Guardian? the Guardians Club? You can explain it. Okay, so the Guardians Club, from well, the way I understand it, there were two ways to enter. Um, and it's basically like a fan, I'm going to call it a fan club. If you've ever thought of like an anime fan club or like 
when I was a kid, like the WB in my local town had like a card and you could get points or something. But the gist is it's just like a group of people who are going to be, I think uh, a whole bunch of people were being asked, I think is it last weekend or this weekend, they're going to go to the office. They were all people who are in California. It's just a way, I think, for the, uh, the LA office to give back to the community. So there were two things you could do to enter. You could either be a guardian player in this, I think it was in 2020, or you could have logged in every single day in 2020. So it's kind of like proving that you're a like a longstanding uh, you know, community member is the gist. Um, but I think as of right now, it's just something I the way I understand it is kind of like it's kind of like filling the void from the meetups where we would go to the meetups and we would, you know, win potentially some merch or something. There's been no merch in a whole year other than the ragdoll figure. So I think this is just kind of one of those like shoehorn in more things to give to the community involve the community and that kind of stuff solid answer solid answer i completely i saw it once somebody asked me is this real it looks like a scam and i just went to the discord i was like it's real and then i never looked at it again <laughs> i probably should have but I'm, I'm pretty sure what i read was it said us only and i was just like don't care yeah <laughs> i'm out i'm out don't care i'm out <laughs> You're Canada, man. Yeah, I don't think there's too much else with that. Overall. Yeah, the Laura figure is apparently, they, they just put that in the game last night. The Laura figure, there's going to be 40 winners, but it's worldwide. Um, And it's a fan, it's another fan art event. So, I have to learn how to draw, if anyone knows how to draw. You do but parlor stuff. Yeah, I asked them before. I actually asked them, can I do like a different medium? And they're like, no. It oh. won't. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like that damn. Unlucky. Yep. I'm like lucky. it's you I, I know. I always I, it's like those are always the events that they give the good stuff away, like the creative ones, and they're like, oh, make this or make that, win an iPad or get the figurine. And I'm like, they're giving out five hundred dollars. Something in a different way. Yeah. Can to be, to be fair, though, I'm pretty sure in the conditions for the art contest, they're allowed to use your art for whatever it is. Yes, so if you exactly. make something really good and win, it's probably worth a lot more than that $500. Basically, they're paying you for your art. Yeah, you're giving away all... I don't know if you... You're giving away all rights that they can just use it for any promotional material at all. So, yeah. That's usually that's usually how art contests go for things. A lot of... Uh, some bigger streamers do that as well. They'll do, like, really big art contests, and it's like, you, you know, by entering this, you give up the rights to the art. Like, we can use it freely as we as we seek it's like it's fair but it's also like an easier way to get really good quality variety yeah, yeah, really good promotion yeah. stuff mm -hmm. yeah. but when and you have like super exclusive stuff i mean it makes sense to want to go for it right yeah they had the coloring book right they took they had the uh, artist make for the color uh i don't know they never they never charge them like it's never something you could buy so i guess legally they wouldn't have to pay the artist for anything so everything I've seen that they've gotten from artists, whether it was the transmog one or like anything else, they, they seem to just use it for promotional material and it's never anything you could actually purchase. So it has that air of exclusivity about it. Gets people yep. hype. Yeah. That Laura figure though, that's that's probably my favorite figure they've ever done. It's like the most dynamic pose of any of them too. Mm -hmm. I still can't get, I can't get the art of... The Arda has eluded me. I've been to two Summoner's World Cups, and I did the Temple of right, Wishes, okay. Tyler. I did the Temple of Wishes, and I was one away. One little... I actually I actually got that as a gift from somebody. They gave me that Arda, that Arda mill. A friend of mine that... I, back when I used to run... When I was in Never Lucky, and we used to run that guild. When I met him for the first time, he brought me the Shihua figure and the Arda mill figure. And I gave away a Shihua figure at Christmas. I have the Shihua yeah. and I have the Valkyrie. Cause I got I want her actually from Shredded Puzzle. Yeah. That's, that really cool. that's an old name. Holy Lord. Yeah. yeah. It was at SWC. <laughs> it was either I think it was 2016 or 2017. And I met a uh, childish a bunch that's of the so guys. Cool. That's awesome. I never in my life thought I'd get one of these. That's Just really like, nice. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a glass case for them soon. Oh, that'd be nice. I don't have enough space to put all of mine out. Like my 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 Katarina's like sitting up there next to the the Angelmon. <laughs> Just I don't know what to do I'm with them. Running all. out of space. I Too have a comic book. 
Oh, oh yeah, the comic books. I have them somewhere. Like My comic book got lost in the mail, and I'm still sad Wait. about it. Oh, right no. there. Wait. Right there behind the snow globes. Oh, you got both? And they're still yeah. I also bought both. Ay. in the packaging. Ay. I think I'm going to send mine to CGC to get them graded. I know that's kind of weird, but like... <laughs> I feel like I'm, I mean, I'm sending a billion Pokemon cards there anyways. I might as well get my comic books graded, right? That's How fair, much are you fair. paying them? I have no idea what comic book costs are for, for grading, but whatever. By the way, <laughs> if you go on to eBay right now and you're looking for Summoner's War merch, uh, the second and, no, the third and fourth comic have already been, like, they're already pre-orderable. Has anyone noticed this? Because, like, they- I haven't even opened my two. Comptos has made no notice about it, but you can already buy the pre-orders on eBay. A really common thing on eBay is to have things ready for pre-order because with seller protection, I mean, they can just they can just refund you their money if like it doesn't come through. It's true, but at the same time, we've not even seen the uh, the screenshots for the the covers yet. But they have the they have three and four covers. It happens for Pokemon stuff a lot. Yeah, like promo cards in Japan that come out for new boxes. People, you can pre-order them, but like the second you see what they are, you can pre-order them. And yeah. it's like, oh, okay, great. <laughs> just like, we just spent $120 on this promo card. But yeah, I, I, mean, I imagine it's exactly the same thing for like these these Summers or um, comics and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I, I was one up and I, I knew. I, I did the same thing when Logic released his last album. I bought an actual album and then I bought, because I, I knew I was going to want to open it, right? I'm like, I'm going to want to read one of these comics. But then how you're always, that collector in me was like i have to have a set of these comics that is unopened like to always have forever so i have one that's still in the packaging that they shipped it to me and i haven't even like i mean broken the seal on the packaging that's awesome i'm like these things will be perfect condition for forever i was one of those kids that always destroyed all my toys i don't know i i always played with things too hard so (laughs) I always wanted to be the one that kept it in the box and it was pristine, but then I was also the one who was like, it's Sailor Moon. I'm going to transform and save people or something. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play with it. Mm-hmm. Or after building that Gundam model that you spent forever because it was a level 10 and you're 10 years old trying to put this pieces this big together. You finally get in, you're like, I want to play with this thing. And the first battle you have, it crumbles. You yep. drop it and it just yeah. like breaks into a hundred pieces. <laughs> Shatters. Like, well, yeah. it's over. <laughs> and I'm not I'm not spending another 10 hours putting it back together. So mm-hmm. <laughs> for sure. Um, okay. One last question before we end the podcast for you guys that I have. Um, and I want to go in order alphabetically. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see the, see the cogs turning. Now there's names doing the alphabet. <laughs> Uh, my question for you is what is your current goal in the game and how do you think you're going to get there well i guess i'm h so i go first huh (sighs) i'd have to say my current goal I i think i can hit g1 in rta this season um i think what's gonna make that happen for me is really just buckling down and learning to draft I'd say that's probably been my biggest downfall in in my play style of Summoner's Wars, even over the seven years, is um, because I I have been around for so long, I could always kind of auto my way through everything. Not so much in RTA, but I could auto pick monsters because I had strong monsters. I had Artemil, I had Wedgeot, I had like a lot of strong Nat 5s. Well, they've changed the game now to where it's not about what monster you have. It's now much more about the runes and the quality and actually knowing how to play the game and counter pick and what's good in this situation and what's not good in that situation. And I've spent like the last couple months really just focusing on and watching people's drafts, watching other players, watching um, Summoners World Cup, watching everything and just really trying to dissect and, and realizing like, hey, Arda isn't a good pick in every battle just because he's Arda. He gets countered by a two-way water fairy now. I can't just slaying whichever monster i want out so i think that it's going to be obtained through just studying and really um focusing on my draft more than anything that's a good goal solid goal i think you have a pretty strong direction and plan um 
I guess the only thing I would say is like you have all of us as resources, so feel free to reach out if you ever need. And and that's the biggest thing. It's really um, I had to open my mind to asking for help. Again, you know, I can't stress it enough, especially for newer players, veteran players. Um, sometimes we get kind of in a funk or in a rut, and we'll kind of keep doing the same things we've been doing. Um, that's one of the greatest things about this game is that the community. It's it's not they won't beat you up to come and ask anyone else for help. Sometimes it takes that extra set of eyes. There's so much numbers. There's so many monsters. So many things always going on in Summoners Wars. Sometimes it's nice to just go to someone and be like, "Hey, um, I think I'm like, I think I'm just lost right now. I have so much going on, and I I can't figure it out why. I know I have the potential, but I, I think I'm missing something. And it just takes that one person to say, "Hey, why don't you try this?" or Let's just sit down and look at your runes and boom, and it, it'll it'll change the whole game for you. So just don't be afraid yeah. to ask. I, I'm going to do that with Stoic. I forgot about that. I told Stoic <laughs> I did that with him this season. <laughs> and, and again, and that's what I mean, like Stoic's very veteran, Tyler, very veteran. You guys have been around <laughs> and like you guys have inspired us as the newer community of streamers coming in and things like that. But even to this day, you guys ask for help. You guys go to other other people even the community you ask players well what's your opinion on it you're always so open-minded about it that it, it helps you adapt and helps you be better at the game at all times so that's just my my advice to the community as well out there don't don't be so big-headed that you think you can't ask other people because most of the time a lot of people in summoners wars they're they're happy to share the information they're happy to help you progress or change just don't ask chat in, in game because they'll troll you <laughs> <laughs> they, don't you. they just don't know the answer that's the joke. they're not yeah. trolling you they're just they just don't know the answer <laughs> yeah they, they, they might not give you the answer you want like feed your mm. lap on week one you know? all right elsie my my answer is a lot more straightforward and three head i want to make the step faster <laughs> Ooh. go fast go fast win games fast. <laughs> five head Oberon skill three pod. Yes, unit go bye bye. <laughs> it's actually funny because I have the same draft LC, and now I'm like, and now that I hit that plus two ten, I'm like, hmm, it's should I change fun. it up or do I just keep doing what I'm doing? It's so fun. <laughs> um, but but legitimately, like um, fighting J Mac yesterday, it completely opened my eyes. I'm like, okay. I can be like C3, maybe G1 potential, but that is another level. Yeah. How much that faster is, do you need to be? Like, uh, my best that is currently 210. I could make her 212, but in reality, she would have to be like plus 220 at least. Oh, yeah. Like G2, G3, it's like a whole another. I think you need plus 220 on Will, or you need plus 223 to outspeed most people in, like, G2 range. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. And that's assuming that you're outspeeding people who have, like, Swift Ganny and stuff, though. Yeah. A lot of people who are, like, running the really, really fast units. Because yeah, I ran and... a Swift Ganny for the Cleavers, and that there was, like, three people in Guardian. I have a, 200, a plus 223 set or faster, or it's on Will at that mm -hmm. speed. And it's oh, just like, okay. Nice. Yeah. Pain. I was excited for plus 212 on Will. I was like, yeah! <laughs> and then you got like these numbers, and you're like, I'm cool. I'm just going to sit. people are just really, out. really fast, right? I mean, Bastet's really slow, because Bastet's 99 base speed. So, like, you need to mm -hmm. be incredibly fast and or yep. Will, right? Yep. It, it just depends on what you're trying to use and how you're trying to use it. But, yeah, yep. getting faster is always a nice goal. Yeah. So, so and to do that, I farm giants. Living the life. Do you farm with yep. the dot team? Yeah. Best way to do it. I'll see, I'll see you in a couple years when you maybe get one speed upgrade. One. Thanks. I actually got one no cap yesterday. I got oh, a pass? quad swift slot four five defense. Mm -hmm. Oh, twenty four. Who cares? Speed. Yeah, you know it's just for swift. speed. You just speed. need the speed. Twenty four. So it's a little below average, but twenty four still pretty I'll, pretty I'll good. take it. It's definitely it's an upgrade. Triple. It's still a triple. Yeah. Yep. All right, Saren, what's your goal? Um. I think I think all of us are trying to hit G1. For me, the biggest thing I'm trying to learn is I think I'm getting better at drafting, but the one thing I'm really guilty of is bad targeting. I think I, I typically don't go... I, I make the scared choice, not the smart choice most time. And so I'll just kind of go for the thing I'm most afraid of, 
realize that was a bad call, try to switch to the to the better decision. But by then I've already committed too much to the first thing. And then I just kind of flip flop a little bit too much. And then you're already, you're already, it's already over. So for me, more confident and just smarter targeting would make a huge difference with my PVP, I think. Yeah, adjusting as you go. Do you find you play really quickly? Do you take like do you take a, a fair amount of time like between turns and stuff? No, I don't. I panic real hard. <laughs> I just kind of panic pick and then I overcommit and then I'm like, well, I guess I just lose now. So I'm just gonna click, 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 click. Do you watch your replays? Yeah, I do. I try to. Um like but... right after a game, will you like stop, watch the replay and like analyze? I do Where try to, but I tilt pretty easily. So sometimes I'm like seven wings in and I'm like, you know what? I just need a mental break. So I'm trying to get into a better habit of like adjusting, being chill about it, knowing when to take a, pra- a break rather than just, just full on quit out and be like, no, I'm just going to sit here and farm more or something. So for me, it's it's really about just being more centered, I guess, since I tilt so hard. Um, but yeah, I do, I do try to watch, but sometimes I feel like, you know, especially when you've been doing it for too long, you're 20 wings in, it just kind of feels like you're just getting bad RNG, but people tend to blame bad RNG for bad playing most of the time. And so I don't want to be that kind of person that's just like blaming the game or over blaming my like rune set saying, oh, I need more stats. I need to be more efficient. And then I need to take more responsibility for me making bad calls and just work out of it. So I think when I first started working on Tilting Less, the, what I did was I, I would play three games and I would stop. Regardless if I won or lost, I would stop and I would look at all three games and I would mark off things that I did well and things I didn't do well. Because mm-hmm. take and, and I applied the same logic because when I was in university, what I used to do is after every single... So during a lecture, I would take notes. I would take really like scribbled notes, just anything that was important that I felt I needed to know. And what I would do is for the next half an hour after the class, I would sit down and write color coordinated notes that were like re summarizing and detailing everything that I learned. Mm -hmm. And I think that like that kind of scenario is what I applied to RTA and it taught me to be less tilt focused, right? It was more about actually learning and less about like bashing my head against a wall, hoping that I would rank up or something would change. My problem is it was, it was very specifically those three games. It was always the same. And it was never, oh, I'm on a win streak. Let me just do a couple more. It was three games and stop. Three games and stop. You take like a five minute break and then come back to it. Yeah, yeah I, had to I need to try that. Similar. Because eventually you can just extend that period because you, there's like a there's like a mental space where you're like, you're good for like three games, right? And mm-hmm. then as you train yourself, you'll be good for five games, 10 games, 15 games, right? I have this bad habit though, is I can't tell if I'm drafting targeting well or if I'm getting carried by rune quality against certain players. And I haven't, really determine how you tell a versus b ask someone to watch a replays third party yeah. perspective yeah a lot of the time if i'm like did i play that right i'll like pull the replay up and i'll be like all right chat who in here is actually good at the game please please <laughs> advise i'll be like how I'm not, would you even g3 deter- chat i'm looking for actual g3 what chat do you mean right every now. everyone in chat's great at the game seriously oh god <laughs> don't oh, give god. him a heart attack it's too early in the uh, day uh, <laughs> Guys, I'll see you guys next podcast for uh for week nine, please and thank <laughs> <laughs> Just out. Way to go. Way to go, LC. You broke it. That's for sure. Chat's pretty smart sometimes. <laughs> but yeah. Um overall, I think that's pretty good. For me, I don't even know like I would say, what about you, Ty? Like goals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, RTA is not really a goal anymore. I kinda just play and have fun. I if I get G2, I get G2. If I get G1, I get G1. It's whatever to me. Like mm-hmm. last last season. I beat a G3 and then I lost to two C3s that like, it was just rough. And I was sitting with Fados at lunch and I was like, you know what? I don't care. I'm not going to play anymore this season. I'll take the G1 and move on. So yeah. I, just had <laughs> I just moved on. Um, I think for me, my main goal is I want to be, I want to be the green line in my guild for violent will runes specifically. Um, so if people who are unfamiliar with what green line concept is, uh, if you're in a high tier guild and you uh, upload your JSON to the Summoners War GT uh, website, you can see your average rune efficiency. Green line is the highest rune efficiency in the guild, and I want to be highest average for Violent Will. I don't think it's possible for me because I don't spend. Um, not not saying like blaming anything, but like if someone's spending and someone's not spending, it's very unlikely the person who's not spending will actually ever get to that green line. Yeah, oh, Lucky's here to expose me. <laughs> he knows. He knows. <laughs> um, but. 
I, I think realistically what I want is because I have no, like, I have no LDNAT fives and I have, like, I don't have a Martina and I, well, basically I just don't have any LDNAT fives. I would like to have a 50% defense win rate in G3 Siege on like, that's, that's my goal. And I'm pretty yeah. sure that will be my entire next year for it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's going to be a goal. long haul. Yeah. And Lucky knows I don't sleep, so it's actually like a possibility that I could overtake him one day. <laughs> Do this. I feel like, I mean, I, the farming never ends. It's just, I feel like I'm always pushing the button. And as time has gotten longer, I realize I'm not as good at pushing the button as I used to be. Like, now there'll be, like, moments of time. And I'm like, man, I remember when I was so inspired, this thing never stopped. And now I'll catch, like, five-minute increments where I'm like, gosh, I just killed, I just killed five runs just now. I'm hurting myself. Oh, I turned the, I'm auto farming. I walk away from my computer and I'm like three hours later. Oh God. I was, uh, I've gotten way worse. Hmm? Do you play on your phone? I play on tablets. You no. play on tablets. Uh, I've started, I've started farming a lot more on my phone, like my old phone specifically, mm. because you can set the vibration notice for when the auto farming ends. That is vibration true. Vibration notice is, is really nice. Uh, yeah, and, my yeah. tablets don't have that because there's no, uh, there's no cell ring on it. Or cell I vibrate, actually so. turn my sound on when I'm working and listen oh, to the animation sound because then i realize oh hey it ended and i'll push the button because the vibration just isn't enough for me like it, it's not a bad idea yeah. yeah i actually play with the sound on not the music <laughs> not the music not the not the same 30 second loop track <laughs> yeah <laughs> over and over. um can, can i else? ask a question is that allowed yeah you're welcome to okay. last question last question because we gotta okay. we gotta wrap up six o'clock. clearly very tendered in twitch and everything you guys have going on what the, like what are you guys working on community wise like with your communities and like what's a goal that you guys have set for yourselves or anything like that have you guys thought that was a about a very deep-rooted question yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry um, I, okay know, i will go first because i have pressure answer. off the boat here I'm, I'm, I, I'm I will go first because i have an answer for it so for me as someone who's been streaming for a really long time um today is actually my 550th stream in a row without Ooh. missing a day um but i've been partnered for four and a half years i've been streaming for five and a half years for me, the thing that I'm looking for in my community is actually taking it back to kind of like where I started, you know, with taking on Pokemon and like kind of building a different kind of environment. I have people who come to the stream for Pokemon, who come to the stream for Summoners War, who just come to the stream to hang out with each other. And I think that that is kind of where I'm leaning towards. I'm pushing towards like continually creating an environment where people want to be there for each other and not just like for me or for the game that I'm playing or whatever I'm doing. But it's really cool to just like open my stream and people are there talking to each other. They're not like, oh, where's Tyler? He's late. What an idiot. They're like, <laughs> they're like, oh shit. It's good to see you, Chris. You know, I hope you've been having a good day. Or like, hey Zenith, what's going on? Like, you know, people are interacting with each other. And for me, that's what I'm working on. I'm working on bringing it back to where I feel like my community is a group of people that actually enjoy spending time with each other and less so focused on like this cult mentality of, hey, it's the streamer. What, uh, what you mean? It's the Once in Love show. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's the Tom and Jerry show. We just need to get Sean right, on it. That makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of like my direction with everything. And hopefully not burning myself out again for the 10 millionth time. I, I think for me, um, mine is, since I'm starting a side business right now, um, I'm trying to find a healthy way of streaming and doing other things. Um, without feeling like I have to stream every day or I have to stream X amount of hours per week. I'm trying to find like a really healthy balance for me since I'm doing so much now. I always feel like I'm taking away from my stream. And if I cancel a stream, that that means I'm like failing the community in some way, specifically because people say, you know, oh, there's not very many people streaming anymore. And you feel like you have to be there for the community. And I want to be there for more for the community. But I have a really bad habit of then feeling a lot of guilt. So for me, it's all about um, balancing better and then also being able to, if I want to stream something else, do that. Um, I, have a, I have a huge fear of that also is just doing anything other than Summoner's War. So I want to have a healthy balance between Summoner's War streaming, having time to do other like IRL things and then streaming something else if I feel like it on a day. That's what I, I'm looking towards. That's fair. That's good goals. I, I kind of 
have the same ideas, some ideas as both of you. Um, I understand uh, streaming out something other than Summoner's War. Uh, it's terrifying sometimes. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And Tyler, I feel like you're kind of an inspiration, honestly, because you you, you can just do, whatever, you just do whatever you want, man. I love it. I love the yeah. vibe. You do Pokemon, you do, I know you did Persona 5 way back when. Not way back when, it was like a lot. months ago. Um, but yeah, you just I have, seven, I have seven and a half thousand hours streamed. That's on, insane. On wow. Twitch yeah. You just do whatever you want. I love it. And mm -hmm. honestly, I, I've kind of taken inspiration from your streak. I look at your 550 number and go, that, that's insane. And then I think I'm on like a hundred or something, or maybe, maybe close to 200, probably not. But I don't really keep track of it. I'm just like, wow, that's such dedication. I want to be like that. That's that's really cool. And like, as long that. as you're, as long as you're having fun, like that's that's the best part of it. And then yeah, I think that's the big thing. Is it's important to have fun. Um, mm -hmm. The mentality changes a little bit when you go full time with it. It becomes like the it becomes your your full time living and your income source. Mm -hmm. But if you forget why you do it it just becomes another shitty grindy job, right? Yep. You might as well just yeah. go work some standard exactly. salary job, hate your life all the same, right? At yep. least you're going to get paid the same amount every day. <laughs> yep. <sighs> I think that's the most important thing when it comes down to streaming is like, absolutely have fun. It doesn't matter if you're streaming for a living. It doesn't matter if you're streaming for like a hobby thing. If you're streaming because your friends want to watch something, just have fun. Mm -hmm. If you're not having fun, what's the point of doing it? <laughs> yep. Exactly. I always say that. Like three, actually, because you asked this, two people damned me on on Twitch yesterday. They're like, "I'm just getting into Pokemon breaks." They're like, "I want to start streaming mobile games." Like, what's your number one piece of advice? I said, "Have fun with what you're doing, because if you're not having fun, nobody wants to watch you, and nobody cares." Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's it's nobody wants to watch problem. somebody who's just like malding that mm -hmm. has one view. You know, if you have 500 viewers and you're malding, it's a little bit different. Yeah. People yeah. are there for the chat to just tease you even more, but mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, <laughs> that's a unique exception. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, either way, I really appreciate having you guys on the podcast. Thank you for your bonus questions as well. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was almost like it was almost like we did like an experience gained episode, but it was a podcast. But it was fun. It was super fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if any any of you guys are interested in joining me for one of those interviews, just let me know. You can definitely do that. Heck but yeah. yeah. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you for your first time on the on the podcast, sir, and as well as Hiroshin. Thank you for coming back as always, sir. Mr. Beard Thank Legend you. himself. <laughs> Thank you. I'm you guys have anything you. you want to say to the community as a goodbye, that'll be it for the podcast today. So, just Korean hearts for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity, Tyler. Um, you know, it's been it's been a lot of fun and getting to know everyone and becoming a, like a big part of this. It's been it's been really like life changing and eye opening. And, you know, thank you guys for always just having an open heart and always being open minded and being so supportive. Um, you know, I, I've watched Tyler for years and years and, you know, what LC was saying, it, it is very inspirational to see, um, you know, all the transitions, all the changes, everything you've done over time. It's like, dude, it's just so cool to have been along the journey with you. And it, it's it's nice to see that, like, you're, you're not only Summoner's Wars, you do everything and people show up and people come to have fun and just to get to know each other and get to know you more. And that that's like that's just the type of environment that's just it, it's so nice to see yeah, out thank there. So thank you for that. Great that Summoner's War can be like that. Mm -hmm. Um also big shout out to our director, Stoic, for putting it all together as always. He does all the all the everything, all the legwork. I just sit here and talk. <laughs> thank you, Stoic. Thank you, Stoic. The heathens. Thank you, Stoic. Yeah. Anything any last words, Elsie? Uh no, just thank you all. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, it was just an absolute blast. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Mm. All right. That wraps up. What did I say? Week eight, I think. Yep. Week eight. All right. Week eight. <laughs> Jeez, thanks for having us, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> thanks, guys. Bye. 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 See ya. Also, last notice, as always, I always say this, but please send me a, a headshot so I can use it for the thumbnail.